The new UN report on climate change, a more accurate and alarming picture of the peril facing our planet. On August 9th, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change of the United Nations, or IPCC, released its eagerly awaited report on the global climate crisis. This report is the product of the cooperative work of hundreds of scientists around the world. The basic science of climate change and global warming has been well established for decades. This is the scientific understanding that human activity, namely the burning of fossil fuels like oil and natural gas, along with the clearing and thinning of forests, is causing the planet to warm. And this is having dire consequences. The new IPCC report represents a tremendous and important advance in this scientific understanding. It paints a clearer, more vivid picture of the devastating impact that climate change is already having. And it identifies some of the massive and even more devastating impacts of climate change that are now locked into the future for thousands of years to come. Let's talk about some of the report's key findings. Because of advances in the science of climate change, this report is able to draw a more direct link between the warming of the planet caused by the burning of fossil fuels and the widespread extreme weather events much of the planet is currently experiencing. These extreme events include this summer's deadly heat waves. July 2021 was the hottest month ever recorded. From the Pacific Northwest here in the US to Italy and Greece in Southern Europe, people have experienced temperatures well above what is considered safe for humans and well beyond previously normal summer temperatures. The new IPCC report concludes that heat waves, which used to occur once every 50 years, will now occur once every 10 years, and that many of the heat waves currently experienced would have been extremely unlikely to occur without human-caused global warming. Because of climate change, tropical storms are becoming larger, stronger, wetter, and more dangerous. They are producing more rain, therefore increasing the risk of flooding. And combined with rising sea levels, which we will talk about more shortly, this flooding will gravely threaten the hundreds of millions of people worldwide who live in low-lying coastal areas. Hurricane Ida recently left a massive trail of damage in Louisiana and Mississippi, traveling up the eastern coast of the United States. This is an example of a tropical storm that is supercharged by climate change. A storm like Ida lasts longer because storms are slower moving due to climate change and they dump more water and are more intense. The new IPCC report has determined that Category 3 to Category 5 storms, the most intense storms, have increased in frequency over the last 40 years due to climate change. With more global warming, such storms will become more frequent. The IPCC report also concludes that wildfires, like those in California, Oregon, and Colorado in the US, and in Turkey, Spain, and Greece, are happening more frequently because of climate change. Wildfires like the recent Caldor fire at Lake Tahoe and the Dixie fire, the single largest fire in California's history, are happening more often because of a dangerous combination of factors. This is what the report calls the compound effects of higher temperatures, heat waves, and droughts driven by human-caused climate change. The new IPCC report also highlights long-term environmental changes that are now locked in to the future and will unfold over thousands and thousands of years, transforming the planet as we know it. Some of these already irreversible changes include rises in ocean temperature, higher acid content of ocean water 
which harms many sea organisms and reduction of oxygen in the oceans. These changes will lead to the dying off of many sea-dwelling species. These changes will also upset the fragile balance of the Earth's ecosystem, like coral reefs, and deplete crucial food sources for much of the planet. The IPCC report reinforces the understanding that warmer atmospheric temperatures and already rising ocean temperatures will lead to further sea level rise, as glaciers and massive ice sheets in the Arctic and Antarctic melt. The flooding that rising sea levels will cause has the potential to make whole sections of the planet unlivable for populations of different island countries and for low-lying countries like Bangladesh. The report builds on advances in scientific methods and findings in the last decade, which have enabled scientists to draw firmer and more definite conclusions about crucial questions, like how much the climate will warm if business as usual continues for decades. For example, scientists better understand more of the history of the Earth's climate changing and how this relates to carbon dioxide concentration. Another example is advances in ocean science. The oceans absorb massive amounts of heat from the atmosphere, and scientists have learned more about how much the oceans can soak up and how warming oceans interact with the temperature. All of this, along with advances in the actual computer models, underlie further certitude in sounding the alarm on the grave danger we face from climate change. This deepened understanding feeds into the most important takeaway message of this new IPCC report. When it comes to dealing with the climate crisis, we are running out of time and moving in the wrong direction. Governments are not acting in ways that correspond to the urgency of this crisis. Now let's talk about what the report doesn't say. In order to stop warming the planet, we need an entire restructuring of the global economy from top to bottom. This means a rapid shift from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources, a transformation of the world agriculture system, and a fundamental change in how goods are produced, distributed, and consumed. The cold truth is that to seriously deal with climate change, you have to put the oil companies out of business, seize their assets, and leave most of the oil in the ground. To address this crisis requires global cooperation and collaboration. You need society-wide economic planning that puts social need and environmental imperatives in command. But none of this can happen under this system. This kind of full-scale transformation of society and economy is utterly at odds with how the world capitalist imperialist system functions. This is a system organized around production for profit, a system in which the great imperial powers compete and contend with each other for global control and influence, a system that is leading to ever widening social inequalities between the rich capitalist imperialist countries and the poor countries of the global south that are suffering the greatest consequences of global warming. However, there is hope on a scientific basis. Those who care about the planet must confront the reality that to deal with climate change, we need system change. And system change requires a real revolution to overthrow capitalism and replace it with a socialist system on the road to communism. This revolution is possible. 
and not in some far off distant future. This is one of those rare times when a real revolution is actually possible in this country. And this is something that must be seized on and built for now. Only a genuinely socialist system can meet the needs of humanity and unleash the creativity, knowledge, and determination of people who agonize over this crisis to go to work on it and create a society and world that could interact with nature in a sustainable way. As it says in some key principles of socialist sustainable development, The new socialist society will put the interests of the preservation of the ecosystems of the entire planet above its own national development. It will encourage and give scientific, technical, and organizational backing for bold international initiatives to prevent widespread ecosystem collapse of coral reefs, rainforests, critical savanna regions, etc. A revolution in the former United States will put an end to the pollution-intensive, cheap labor, global manufacturing grids of production. The structure of production and the resource base of a new socialist economy will no longer rely on labor and materials from other countries like cheap parts from hellish factories in Mexico and inflows of oil from abroad. The new society will provide technical and financial assistance for helping to clean up environmental damage in other parts of the world caused by the energy and mining operations, agribusiness and forestry, and industrial activities, as well as the export and dumping of toxic waste of the former U.S. empire. The new socialist state will immediately dismantle all military bases and occupations. It will vastly downsize the military industry and begin to convert huge components for productive social use. Think about what it would mean if a revolution were to take place right here in the belly of the beast in the country most responsible for the climate crisis. While nothing is guaranteed in regard to this crisis, a revolution would enable humanity to begin working on this problem right away and would open up the possibility of the large-scale transformations required to curb carbon emissions from fossil fuels and shift to renewable energy on the scale that's required. And the new revolutionary society would serve as a base area to spread revolution to other parts of the world. It would be a source of hope and daring to people all over the world and an inspiration for ecologically sustainable socialist development the world over. For more information, check out the Constitution for a New Socialist Republic in North America, authored by Bob Avakian, the special resource page on the environmental emergency, and the special issue of Revolution Newspaper on the environment at revcom.us.